SCAD painting alumnus Jose Parla came of age in Miami's underground art scene. He might be best known for his 90-foot mural, One, Union of the Senses, that greets visitors of One World Trade Center in Manhattan. In Roots, presented by SCAD Museum of Art, Parla highlights the bonds between multicultural communities and their environments. So, Jose, thank you so much for being here. I think about walls when I think about your work, other people's walls, and you're creating your own walls now with your work. I grew up painting on walls and not only painting on them, but recording them and photographing them. And I would also enjoy photographing the ones that look like the most neglected walls, the walls that had political writing or that they were falling apart and you could see the layers of its colors torn and, and, and with posters ripped. And I, I really like that sort of a psychogeographical frame work of fragments throughout different cities that I saw a sort of linear storyline that I could draw inspiration from. Walls have always been the first point of departure for inspiration for my work. It seems like you've done so much improvisation in your career. When I was imagining you jumping, I thought maybe you had mattresses or something to jump on, but you were literally mark making with your body. It was on impulse. Uh, I felt this kind of like synesthesia going through me and, you know, I grew up dancing as well, so I bring a lot of that into the painting that kind of energy. I wanted to do long strokes and gestures, and the only way to do it was to jump from the 12-foot ladder while keeping the brush on the surface. But um, it's interesting because you're connecting your eye to where you're gonna land before you even do it, and it's happening very instinctual. What influences would you say are most important in your work? Even before I came to SCAD, I had been doing art as a kid in the streets for a very long time. I was born in Miami, but at the age of one, my family moved to Puerto Rico and we returned to Miami basically 1982. So you had kids from Latin America, South America, Colombians, Venezuelans. There was a really big melting pot happening in Miami. And the one thing that I felt was a glue that united kids of all backgrounds was hip hop culture. Graffiti became a language that was so abstract and camouflage that it was one unified language. It didn't separate us, it unified us. Yes. It was really cemented art and urban culture. Us as practitioners took it very seriously, how we collected our sketchbooks and took photographs and kept albums. And so there was a whole culture You that were went recording along. your yeah. work. Recording it specifically because it's, it's ephemeral in nature. Would you consider it a form of calligraphy? It is, it's a complete form of calligraphy. It had its code with uh, interlocking letters that you would share between you and your friends, if we were to look back and see that there's an American calligraphy, it would probably have been born out of the ghettos through this so-called graffiti style. It's very American. Miami in the 1980s was a very tough town. My neighborhood was a pretty violent place. And uh, as an artist, you were kind of uh, an outcast. And so being that outcast at the same time kind of kept you safe. So the art saved us along the way in many places. And, and it saved me a second time when I was awarded the Scholastic Art Awards that led to the Francis McCormick Scholarship that brought me to SCAD, which changed my life to be able to have the education and catapult into what I was to do. I feel that my job is constantly to remind young people. It takes a lot of effort, a lot of patience, and a lot of hard work and years to sort of cement yourself in the arts and that through that hard work, you can sort of shape your path and your way. There's sort of like unwritten rules of uh, dedication and uh, devotion that you can put into your work to lead you to have some success. And that's my message. <laughs>